So thank you, uh, Crystal, for uh, for giving me that uh, privilege to be uh, on a broadcast. I give thanks to God for being able to share the truth of His Word, and I pray the Holy Spirit would uh, take the truths that I've shared today and would apply to the hearts of each one of us. Amen. Amen. So this is often a subject that I'm uh, posed with. People want to know if it's okay, for example, to attend certain ceremonies or certain religious uh, events that may or may not be Christian, and they, they often want to press me to, to get my, my opinion. So what I, what I try to do is I try to direct people back to the scriptures. Now, uh, it's easy, of course, to become very judgmental and say that all things in this category are sinful. Uh, I'm not going to take that approach today. Rather, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the Bible says, and I'm going to challenge all of us to think more critically about uh, things that we uh, participate in. Amen. Amen. So the message, uh, the message that I've, uh, I'm giving today is from the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. And uh, you have it there on your sheet. I'm not going to stray too far from the sheet. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. And again, Revelation 18.4 from the Legacy Standard Bible. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. So there's two verses that we'll camp uh, today. We're going to be camping in Revelations 18, verse 1 to 4, as well as Revelation 17, verse 5. Those are our two verses, so if you have a Bible and you'd like to follow along, Revelation 18, verses 1 to 4, and Revelation 17, verse 5. So as an opener, I would like to say this. Warnings are given to people to avoid future danger. This is what a warning is by definition. It is a premonition based on facts. For example, meteorologists warn residents to evacuate an area where impeding natural disasters will soon hit. Doctors warn patients about dietary concerns that can lead their patients towards disease. Military analysts warn their commanders of impeding opposing offensives or counteroffensives that could lead to their defeat. Mothers warn their children about associating with bad company that can corrupt good morals. Economists give financial forecasts to help companies shape their budgets to avoid bankruptcy. Mechanics give a structural report to vehicle owners to plan for future automotive repairs. We get the point, right? In all the examples above, a warning is given to individuals in goodwill or good faith so that by heeding the advice, the recipients can avoid future danger. A wise person would do well to listen to the sound advice instead of being or acting recklessly. So we don't want to be reckless, we want to be wise. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 27 verse 12 a prudent man sees evil and hides. The simple pass on and are punished. The God of the Bible knows every spiritual pitfall that exists as well and offers people a warning to flee out of her. So the Bible talks about a her. This is a, uh, a not a uh, virtuous woman. This is not a lady. This is, uh, the Bible calls her a harlot. And uh, there in Revelation chapter chapter 17, verse 5, God has a name for this uh, this harlot of a lady who is in fact a, a false uh, religious, political, and commercial entity. She takes on a much larger uh, size, much like the image of uh, Nebuchadnezzar that we saw there in Daniel chapter 3 during the Great Tribulation. But... Right now, her, her roots are, are still digging deep, and her branches are growing in this age. As John uh, the Apostle said, even today there are many antichrists today. Amen. Revelation 17, verse 5. 
And John says, and on her forehead a name was written. So this this is a, 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 a mystery woman, but she has a name on her forehead. And it says, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. So this woman, this, this harlot has a name. It's Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Now, I will endeavor to use good judgment in describing the kind of religion that is of her, in quotations, without going beyond what the scriptures say. 1 Corinthians 1.6. We want to be careful not to go that which is revealed in the scriptures. Amen? A mystery is a truth previously unknown in the Old Testament, but that has been revealed in the New Testament. In the case of Mystery Babylon, she is a false world system that will be judged during the seven-year Great Tribulation period. <laughs> so this is a period known as the seven-year Great Tribulation. After the rapture of the church, this takes place on the earth after the rapture of the church. There in Revelation 18, verse 1 to 3. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, and she has become a dwelling place of demons, and a prison of every unclean spirit, and a prison of every unclean bird and a prison of every unclean and hateful beast. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich by the power of her sensuality. Firstly, I will describe the birth of her roots, her being Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. I will describe the birth of her root. She is called Mystery Babylon. She gets her name from Genesis chapter 11 of the Tower of Babylon. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. I'm reading from the Legacy Standard Bible. Now the whole earth had the same language and the same words, and it appeared as they journeyed east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. Verse 3, Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone, and they had tar for mortar. Verse 4, And they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make for ourselves a name, lest we be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Her birth is a rebellious coalition of three internal parts. Commercial, political, and religious. Firstly, she is rebellious because she does not heed the word of God. Genesis 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, the earth, fill it. God's command for the reconstituted humanity after the Noadic flood was for them to disperse throughout the world and repopulate it accordingly. In rebellion to this command, the builders of Babylon did the opposite. They purposed to unify their power structure in rebellion towards the God of heaven. Turning to the next page, they did this by incorporating three parts. Three parts. 
The first is commercial. There in verse 3 and 4 of Genesis 11. Let us make bricks. The Babylonian system is enraptured in commerce, buying and selling. And it has to do with economy. It is very tied with control of buying and selling and goods that are being produced and distributed and controlled. Let us make bricks. And of course, this was to make their tower or their headquarters or their political power base that they would rule from. Which next, ne brings us to our next point is political. So her first stratagem of rebellion system is commercial. Let us make bricks. And her second is political. Let us build for ourselves a city. A city under the rule of man. A city under their control with its own set of governance and rules and policies apart from the rule of heaven. Which brings us to our third part of Mystery Babylon's control system. Religious. It's a religious system as well as an economic or commerce system as well as a political system of laws. Religious. And a tower whose top reach into heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over the face of the earth. You can see the difference there between rebellious humanity, they want to make a name for themselves. And the righteous line, for example, of uh, Seth, they called upon the name of the Lord. They made altars to the Lord their God, and they worshipped the name of the Lord God. And they listened for the, 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 the Lord God. And they were constituted under the rule of the Lord God, first under Moses, and then as, a, as the church of Jesus Christ, under the headship of Jesus Christ. But note that these rebels have no interest in being under the rule of God. Rather, they say, let us make a name for ourselves, steeped in self-will and pride. Commercial, political, religious. While these headings are o an overly simplified description, they accurately, accurately describe the core essence of Mystery Babylon. Remember that Mystery Babylon is a world system. It's not enough to say that it's about currency. It's not enough to say that it's about politics. And it's not enough to say that it's about religion. It's a, a combination of all three. She, Mystery Babylon, is a rebellious coalition that unifies itself under a commercial, political, and religious system. Secondly, I will describe her according to her name. Secondly, I will describe her according to her name. Revelation 17, verse 5. And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. Firstly, she is called Great. This greatness does not mean she is esteemed in the eyes of God, but rather she is highly esteemed in the eyes of the men of the earth. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Being great in and of itself is as neutral as testing reveals either a pass or a fail. A man can be a champion for good, or a champion for evil. Greatness comes in all forms, but God will ultimately judge every great thing according to his measure. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. Let the one who does unrighteousness still do unrighteousness. 
And the one who is filthy, still be filthy. And let the one who is righteous, still do righteousness. And the one who is holy, still keep himself holy. Verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to his work. Therefore, she is considered great according to the standard of her appointed station. She is great on the earth and in the eyes of earthly men. The kingdoms of men on earth, apart from God in heaven, consider her great. She is great in the eyes of those who appraise things by their carnal senses and not according to true spiritual measure. Genesis chapter 25, verse 34. So Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went away. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Also, 1 Corinthians 2.15. But he who is spiritual examines all things, yet he himself is examined by no one. She is also called the mother of harlots. She is also called the mother of harlots. A harlot is a prostitute who sells her body for money. Babylon is a spiritual prostitute. Prostitution is a common and ancient trade that would certainly be considered great in the eyes of carnal men, but is always considered immoral in the Bible. God's plan for mankind since the beginning was one man and one woman. Genesis 2.24 Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. In the Bible, marriage is often viewed as a symbol for God's covenant love with the saints throughout human history. God the Father is pictured as being married to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, thus says Yahweh, your creator, O Jacob, and now who he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched nor will the flame burn you. For I am Yahweh your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And also in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 6, six and 8. Then Yahweh said to me, in the days of Josiah, Jos Josiah the king, quote, Have you seen what faithless Israel did? She went up on every high hill and under every green tree, and she was a harlot there. I said, after she has done all these things, she will return to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw that for all the adulteries of faithless Israel... I had, I had sent her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and was a harlot also. So we made a point that God the Father is pictured as being married to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. There's lots more verses for that. The church is called the Bride of Christ in the New Testament. So you have the marriage of 
God the Father in Israel, the Old Testament, and you have the marriage of Jesus Christ to the bride or the church in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to Christ. A pure virgin to Christ. The name harlot means that mystery Babylon is unfaithful and breaks covenant with God in the worst possible way. She commits the sin of idolatry continually. Exodus chapter 20, verse uh, 3 to 5. Now this is the root, if you will. This is maybe fifth could have been in the root. But this is spiritual adultery or also called idolatry. The sin of idolatry wrapped up there in the first three commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven, above or on the earth beneath, or in the water under the sun. Verse 5. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. She is not only a harlot, but she is also a mother. She births other harlots who will be unfaithful to God. This is the defiling influence of spiritual harlotry. Harlotry begets more harlotry. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Furthermore, she is called the mother of abomination. She is called the mother of abomination. There in Revelation 17, verse 5. An abomination is a word that describes that which is considered the most vile evil in the eyes of God. So the fruit of her harlotry is abominations. Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19. Verse 16, there are six things which the Lord, which Yahweh hates, even seven which are an abomination to him. 17, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked thoughts, feet that hasten to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who spreads strife among brethren. And that's there on your page. These are six things which Yahweh hates. These are an abomination. So these are examples of the abominations that the mother of harlots and her harlots give birth to on the earth. This is the fruits of the harlots. The sins left listed above fall into the gap category of mortal sins. In other words... Spiritual harlots who possess a license to sin will be damned. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, 
nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. And there we see a hint of how we are to respond, what we'll get to in Revelation 18, verse 4. We have to come out of her. We have to depart from her. We have to, as it were, we have to divorce ourselves with mystery Babylon and her falsehoods. Amen. Amen. Thirdly, I will examine the enticement of the harlot. Her name is written on her forehead. There in Revelation 17, 5. The harlot is loud and proud. The harlot works to flaunt herself, to capture her victims. She is like a lioness seeking a prey to devour. She promises life, but instead kills. She promises pleasure, but instead leads to dishonor. She flatters with the tongue, but her flattery plunges men to their destructions. And for more um, detail, we'll go to Proverbs chapter 3. My son, do not forget my law, and let not your heart, and let your heart guard my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let love and kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good insight in the eyes of God and men. Trust Yahweh in your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. <coughs> and there, if you go to, oh, pardon me, is that the wrong proverb? Oh, pardon me, Proverbs 5, please forgive me. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my discernment, that you may keep discretion and that your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as the two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold of Sheol. Lest she watch the path of life, her tracks are unstable. She does not know it. So now, my sons, listen to me, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her. And do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your splendor to others and the years to the cruel one. Lest strangers be satisfied by your strength and by your painful labor, those in the house of a foreigner, and you groan at your end when your flesh and your body are consumed. And you say, how I have hated discipline and my heart spurned reproof. I have not listened to the voice of my instructors and I have not inclined my ear to teachers. I was almost in utter ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. And it continues all the way to 15 to verse 23. I'll read 23. He will die for lack of discipline. And in the abundance of his folly, he will stumble in intoxication. And that's what this woman does to her victim. She intoxicates them with her allure. And remember that her intrigues are commerce, politics, and uh, religion. And this is all wrapped up in one. And, and in false religion, there, that's the allurement right there. So next, we said that, uh, fourthly, we will examine the outcome of the harlot. So we looked at, we looked at the root of the harlot, the name of the harlot, the enticement of the harlot. Now we'll look at the outcome of the harlot. There in Revelation 18, verse uh, 2 to 3. Let's turn there. And he cried with a loud, with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, and she has become a dwelling place of demons, and a prison of every unclean spirit, and a prison of every unclean bird, and a prison of of every unclean and hateful beast. Verse 3. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich by the power of her sensuality. 
The power base of Mystery Babylon is the demonic realm. The demonic realm works under their federal head to entice humanity with every possible allurement of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life to cause mankind to commit sexual immorality with her. Synonymous with idolatry. Once all this harlotry has become ripe for judgment in the eyes of the Lord, he will execute judgment of the severest kind on the mother of harlots and on all her spiritual children. Revelation 14, verse 15, and as we read also in Revelation 18, verse 2 and 3. And another angel came out of the sanctuary saying, crying out with a loud voice to him who sits on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then he who sits on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then again in verse... 18. Then another angel, the one who has authority over fire, came out from the altar, and he called with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Put in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, because her grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle to the earth and gathered the clusters from the vine of the earth and threw them into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And so is the fate of all those who ally themselves with mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. Now then, if that is to be her bitter end, what is God's plea while, to us while Babylon stands? Well, come out of her, my people. Revelation 18, verse 4. Everyone who names the name of the Lord must depart from evil. The Babylonian system and all its carnal, commercial, political, and religious structures are cursed by God for destruction because of its core rebellion and rejection of the truth. The Bible teaches not to participate in the sins of others. 1 Timothy 5.7 And command, command these things. Oh, pardon me. Second uh, Timothy, Second Timothy five seven. Your sheet reads first. Should, first Timothy. Oh, it is First Timothy. Once uh, four four seven. Uh, the verse in question. The verse in question is when Timothy, uh, or pa rather Paul instructs Timothy not to partake in the sins of others. First Timothy. Uh, you have to forgive me there. The scripture in mind is the one where Paul says to Timothy, do not be a partaker in the sins of others. And that applies for spiritual idolatry. Let us not be partakers in spiritual idolatry. Amen. Amen. Separation from the world means living in the world, but not being of the world. This is, a, this is hard to do because those around us continue to practice lawlessness. The Bible gives us a strong prohibition not to enter into spiritual enterprises with non-Christians. This is called being unequally yoked. And I'll close with this, 2 Corinthians 6, 14-17, and you have it on your sheet. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? 
Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has a sanctuary of God with idols? For we are a sanctuary of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we see uh, the day of your coming approaching, and we we know that uh, we are waiting the, the bridegroom who says, come up hither and takes the bride home. In the meantime, Father, we, we live in a world that is, as your word says, under the power of the evil one, under satanic influence. Father, help us to be pure. Help us to separate ourselves from harlotry and spiritual idolatry as it's found in high places, Lord, in the rulers of this world and religious leaders and political leaders and even in the commerce and finance section. Father, we pray that you would spare us this um, encroachment. Keep keep us faithful, Lord, to the, as we, we pray, proclaim your name and we worship the one true God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and we proclaim Christ crucified, Father, to the ends of the earth. Father, we pray that as uh, these idols are being set up in the hearts of men and at least forecasted, we have been given a warning, although this is for the tribulation saints, Lord, we see the groundwork for a one world religion and one world government being laid before our feet today as the uh, unions um, seek to overthrow the rule of God and his law in their hearts and in their nations, Father. We know that our citizenship is not of this earth, for we are citizens of heaven, Lord, and we have a citizenship there. Father, we pray that as we continue to be in the kingdom of God, we pray, Lord, to hasten the kingdom of heaven. When you come forth and you rule this world too, with a rule of iron, with a rod of iron, and you're, you shall have an everlasting kingdom from sea to sea in your dominion, will have no end, Lord, and all the kings of the earth shall bow to you. Father, we pray today for those who are tampering with Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, and the, the, the mother of, of every abomination, Lord. I pray, Lord, they would not touch an unclean thing, Lord. They separate themselves from the defiling influence of this false system. Father, keep us now. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen.